wore this shirt today to give you some motivation. Hey guys, my name is Miranda and welcome to my universe. Today I'm actually filming a video that has been requested by some of you watching. I'm so sorry it took me this long to make this video, but I'm going to be talking about tips and tricks on how you can read more. Now, of course, every single reader is different and all of these tips might not work for you, but I just figured I would go ahead and tell you some of the things that have worked for me over the past few years when I have wanted to read more books. Also, don't forget, if you have a question that you want me to answer in my 500 subscriber Q&A, feel free to comment it down below so I will go ahead and answer those for you. Now my first tip is to get a Goodreads account. If you don't know what Goodreads is, it is a website and an app that allows you to keep track of the books you are reading, the books you have read, and the books that you want to read. You can also follow other people and follow along with their reading journey as well. Goodreads allows you to give yourself a yearly goal and it actually keeps you up to date on how on track you are, if you're behind, if you're ahead. I really like this app because it has definitely motivated me over these past few years. You can even type in the page number of the book that you are reading right now, so you can even see how far along in the book you actually are. And I just think that is super cool. This app has been super helpful and I think it's so much fun because you get to also rate books and see other people's ratings and read other reviews and even write your own reviews too. I just think the app overall is very inspirational and allows me to find more books while also keeping track of the books that I want to read right now. Now my second tip is to schedule your reading. Now this can be seen in many different ways. Different things work for different people but for me I don't usually schedule how many pages I want to read a day though I do know people that do that and it works very well for them. What I do is I usually set a goal for a day or a week of how long I want to read for. For example, I am a huge night owl, so I know that I can get a lot of reading done at night because that is when I'm mostly awake for some reason, so I usually like to read. I do know some people that read first thing when they wake up though because they are early birds, so really this also depends on how well you know yourself and whether or not you know when is the best time for you to read. Like I was saying earlier, you can also set yourself a goal, like say I want to read 20 pages a day. I usually do that with larger books, so Stephen King or books that are really heavy and very saturated in themes and things like that, I usually have to say, okay, I need to read this amount of pages today, this amount of pages tomorrow in order to keep myself on track. But usually just saying, okay, I'm gonna read an hour at night works for me very well. So it does depend on you and what you think will work better. Tip number three is one that I used to not care about at all but now it's a huge integral part of my reading life and that is audiobooks. I used to be somebody who did not like audiobooks or at least I thought I didn't like audiobooks until I listened to an actual good audiobook and I my life has been changed you guys. The thing with audiobooks is that it allows you to do other things while also reading so you can be driving and listening to an audiobook. You can be waiting in line somewhere and listening to an audiobook. You can go for a jog. You can go to the gym and listen to an audiobook. I usually do my chores while listening to an audiobook. For example if I have to clean my room or if I have to do the dishes or fold laundry I'll just pop in my headphones and listen to an audiobook while I'm doing those. It just helps a lot because it allows me to actually be reading and actually be processing something while doing something that is usually super boring for me. There are a lot of audiobook subscriptions out there. For example, there is Audible, but there are also a lot of places that you can find free audiobooks. For example, YouTube is a big one. YouTube doesn't have every single book out there, but a lot of the classics, a lot of the older books have audiobooks that are actually on this app that you're on right now. There are also a lot of apps that you could find that give you a lot of classic audiobooks. So there's one that I have, I'm pretty sure it's literally just called audiobooks, but if you look up through the app store audiobooks, a ton of different apps will pop up. I get most of my audiobooks through my library card because my library card allows me to access my library's app, which then I get to actually rent out audiobooks, I get to rent out ebooks, and that 
actually brings me on to my fourth point, and that is to get a library card. Now, I know that we are going through this pandemic, but what I have done is research. <laughs> and I have found out that a lot of libraries are giving away electronic library cards so that you can access their apps. Now, I live in Arizona, so I know that a lot of Arizona libraries are doing that. I am not sure about libraries in other places, but I would assume that they would do that as well because libraries are still trying to get through this. We're all getting through this together. They still want their books to be accessible to you even if you can't physically be in their library. Actually, at the beginning of quarantine, I kind of went on a craze and I got five library cards, I'm pretty sure by the end of it. And they all allowed me to access their apps and get their audiobooks and ebooks for free. Now they only lasted a month because they are electronic. They're not an actual physical library card and I didn't really fill out too much information to get them. But nonetheless, I was still able to access all of their library books and I do think it is super helpful. Tip number five is to read multiple books at once. And of course, I also know that this doesn't really work well for a lot of people. For example, my mom can only read one book at a time. She likes to just get through it and not have to worry about juggling other storylines as well. A few years ago, I actually used to be that exact same way. I didn't like to read multiple books at once. And sometimes, like right now, I'm only reading one book, but for the most part, I really like reading multiple books. My coworker actually said it so well, except she said it about TV shows but I think that this can be applied to anything really. She told me that she always watches two different TV shows, one more serious or melancholy one, and then one that is more fun and upbeat. She told me that she does that because it allows her to watch whatever she's in the mood for. Because sometimes if you're watching a super serious TV show or reading a super serious book, someday, you might wake up and think, you know, I really want like a light, more romance kind of book. And I think that is such a great way to explain it because I am such a mood reader. I like to read whatever I'm in the mood for. So if I read like a super serious or even a scary book, like if I'm reading a Stephen King book, I really like to also have another book that I'm reading on the side just in case I really don't want to dive deep into the fright zone anymore. <laughs> of course, it all depends on what you prefer, but if you've never read multiple books at once, I definitely highly recommend you try it and see how much you like it. All right, and then the last tip I have for you guys is to always have a book on you. Whether you're on the way to the grocery store, you're going to class, no matter the circumstance, I highly recommend that you always carry a book with you, whether it is a physical book, an audiobook, an ebook, because you never know when you're going to have free time to whip out that book and read a few pages. If you're going to the bathroom, instead of picking up your phone, maybe pick up your book and take that with you, because if you're anything like me, I spend a lot of time just scrolling through social media while sitting on the toilet. I don't know if that's TMI, but at this point, I don't care. <laughs> I have never once in my life regretted taking a book somewhere with me, but I have regretted not taking a book with me before. So I just say take books with you, listen to a YouTube audiobook, and you will have it on the drive to work. Take that physical book with you to school so that if your teacher shows up 15 minutes late, you have 15 minutes of extra reading time. I just think you can never go wrong if you always have a book with you. All right, and that wraps up my tips and tricks video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that some of these will work out for you and hopefully will get you to read more. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. Please be safe, make good choices, and I will see you next time. Bye!